John Gould FRS, the 14th of September 1804 to the 3rd of February 1881, was an English ornithologist and bird artist. He published a number of monographs on birds, illustrated by plates that he produced with the assistance of his wife, Elizabeth Gould, and several other artists including Edward Lear, Henry Constantine Richter, Joseph Wolfe and William Matthew Hart. He has been considered the father of bird study in Australia and the Gould League in Australia is named after him. His identification of the birds now nicknamed, Darwin's Finches played a role in the inception of Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. Gold's work is referenced in Charles Darwin's book, On the Origin of Species. Topic. Early life Gould was born in Lyme Regis the first son of a gardener. He and the boy probably had a scanty education. Shortly afterwards his father obtained a position on an estate near Guildford, Surrey, and then in 1818 Gould became foreman in the Royal Gardens of Windsor. He was for some time under the care of J.T. Aitone, of the Royal Gardens of Windsor. The young Gould started training as a gardener, being employed under his father at Windsor from 1818 to 1824, and he was subsequently a gardener at Ripley Castle in Yorkshire. He became an expert in the art of taxidermy. In 1824 he set himself up in business in London as a taxidermist, and his skill helped him to become the first curator and preserver at the Museum of the Zoological Society of London in 1827. Topic. Research and works published Gold's position brought him into contact with the country's leading naturalists. This meant that he was often the first to see new collections of birds given to the Zoological Society of London. In 1830 a collection of birds arrived from the Himalayas, many not previously described. Gould published these birds in A Century of Birds from the Himalaya Mountains 1830-1832. The text was by Nicholas Aylward Vigors and the illustrations were drawn and lithographed by Gould's wife Elizabeth Coxon Gould. Most of Gould's work were rough sketches on paper from which other artists created the lithographic plates. This work was followed by four more in the next seven years, including Birds of Europe in five volumes. It was completed in 1837, Gould wrote the text, and his clerk, Edwin Prince, did the editing. The plates were drawn and lithographed by Elizabeth Coxon Gould. A few of the illustrations were made by Edward Lear as part of his illustrations of the family of Cetacity in 1832. Lear, however, was in financial difficulty, and he sold the entire set of lithographs to Gould. The books were published in a very large size, imperial folio, with magnificent colored plates. Eventually 41 of these volumes were published, with about 3,000 plates. They appeared in parts at £3.3s, £3, a number, subscribed for in advance, and in spite of the heavy expense of preparing the plates, Gould succeeded in making his ventures pay, realizing a fortune. This was a busy period for Gould who also published Icones Avium in two parts containing 18 leaves of bird studies on 54 cm plates as a supplement to his previous works. No further monographs were published as in 1838 he and his wife moved to Australia to work on the birds of Australia. Shortly after their return to England, his wife died in 1841. Elizabeth Gould completed 84 plates for Birds of Australia before her death. Topic. Work with Darwin When Charles Darwin presented his mammal and bird specimens collected during the second voyage of HMS Beagle to the Zoological Society of London on 4 January 1837, the bird specimens were given to Gould for identification. He set aside his paying work and at the next meeting on 10 January reported that birds from the Galapagos Islands which Darwin had thought were blackbirds, gross bills, and finches were in fact a series of ground finches which are so peculiar, 
as to form an entirely new group, containing 12 species. This story made the newspapers. In March, Darwin met Gould again, learning that his Galapagos, Wren, was another species of finch and the mockingbirds he had labeled by island were separate species rather than just varieties, with relatives on the South American mainland. Subsequently, Gould advised that the smaller southern rhea specimen that had been rescued from a Christmas dinner was a separate species which he named Rhea darwini, whose territory overlapped with the northern rheas. Darwin had not bothered to label his finches by island, but others on the expedition had taken more care. He now sought specimens collected by Captain Robert Fitzroy and crewmen. From them he was able to establish that the species were unique to islands, an important step on the inception of his theory of evolution by natural selection. Gold's work on the birds was published between 1838 and 1842 in five numbers as part three of Zoology of the Voyage of HMS Beagle, edited by Charles Darwin. Elizabeth Gould illustrated all the plates for part three. Topic. Research in Australia In 1838 the Golds sailed to Australia, intending to study the birds of that country and be the first to produce a major work on the subject. They took with them the collector John Gilbert. They arrived in Tasmania in September, making the acquaintance of the governor Sir John Franklin and his wife. Gould and Gilbert collected on the island. In February 1839 Gould sailed to Sydney, leaving his pregnant wife with the Franklins. He travelled to his brother-in-law's station at Urundi, spending his time searching for bowerbirds in the Liverpool range. In April he returned to Tasmania for the birth of his son. In May he sailed to Adelaide to meet Charles Sturt, who was preparing to lead an expedition to the Murray River. Gould collected in the Mount Lofty Range, the Murray Scrubs and Kangaroo Island, returning again to Hobart in July. He then travelled with his wife to Urundi. They returned home to England in May 1840. The result of the trip was the Birds of Australia 1840-48. It included a total of 600 plates in seven volumes, 328 of the species described were new to science and named by Gould. He also published a monograph of the Macropodidae, or family of kangaroos 1841-1842 and the three-volume work The Mammals of Australia 1849-1861. Elizabeth died in 1841 after the birth of their eighth child, Sarah, and Gold's books subsequently used illustrations by a number of artists, including Henry Constantine Richter, William Matthew Hart and Joseph Wolfe. Topic. Hummingbirds Throughout his professional life Gould had a strong interest in hummingbirds. He accumulated a collection of 320 species, which he exhibited at the Great Exhibition of 1851. Despite his interest, Gould had never seen a live hummingbird. In May 1857 he traveled to the United States with his second son, Charles. He arrived in New York too early in the season to see hummingbirds in that city, but on 21 May 1857, in Bartram's Gardens in Philadelphia, he finally saw his first live one, a ruby-throated hummingbird. He then continued to Washington, D.C. where he saw large numbers in the gardens of the capital. Gould attempted to return to England with live specimens, but, as he was not aware of the conditions necessary to keep them, they only lived for two months at most. Topic. Birds of Great Britain The University of Glasgow, which owns a copy of Birds of Great Britain, describes John Gould as the greatest figure in bird illustration after Audubon Gould was not directly responsible for the illustrations himself, although he supervised their production closely. An auctioneer's Sotherans described the work as Gould's pride and joy. 
Gould had already published some of the illustrations in Birds of Europe, but Birds of Great Britain represents a development of his aesthetic style in which he adds illustrations of nests and young on a large scale. Sotheran's Co. reports that Gould published the book himself, producing 750 copies, which remain sought after both as complete volumes, and as individual plates, currently varying in price from £450 to £850. The University of Glasgow records that the volumes were issued in London in 25 parts, to make the complete set, between 1863 and 1873, and each set contained 367 coloured lithographs. Gould undertook an ornithological tour of Scandinavia in 1856, in preparation for the work, taking with him the artist Henry Wolfe who drew 57 of the plates from Gould's preparatory sketches. According to the University of Glasgow Gold's skill was in rapidly producing rough sketches from nature a majority of the sketches were drawn from newly killed specimens capturing the distinctiveness of each species. Gould then oversaw the process whereby his artists worked his sketches up into the finished drawings, which were made into coloured lithographs by engraver William Hart. There were problems, the stone engraving of the snowy owl in Volume 1 was dropped and broken at an early stage in the printing. Later issues of this plate show evidence of this damage and consequently the early issue, printed before the accident, are considered more desirable. The lithographs were hand-colored. In the introduction for the work, Gould states, Every sky with its varied tints and every feather of each bird were colored by hand, and when it is considered that nearly 280,000 illustrations in the present work have been so treated, it will most likely cause some astonishment to those who give the subject a thought. The work has gathered critical acclaim, according to Mullins and Swan, Birds of Great Britain is the most sumptuous and costly of British bird books. Whilst Wood describes it as a magnificent work, Isabella Tree writes that it was seen, perhaps partly because its subject was British, as the culmination of his genius. <laughs> Topic. Tributes A number of animals have been named after Gould, including those in English such as the Gould's mouse. Birds named after Gould include Gould's petrel, Pteridroma leucoptera, Gould's shortwing, Brachyteryx stellata, Gould's frogmouth, Batrachostomus stellatus, Gould's jewelfront, Heliodoxa oresens, Gould's inca, Celagena inca, Gould's toucanet, Celenodera goldi. Dot-eared coquette, Lafreni goldi, olive-backed euphonia, euphonia goldi. Two species of reptiles are named in his honor: Gold's monitor, Varanus goldi, and Gold's hooded snake, Parasuta goldi, Gold's sunbird, or Mrs. Gold's sunbird, Ethopyga goldiae, and the Goldian finch, Erythra goldiae, were named after his wife. A visit to Gould in his old age provided the inspiration for John Everett Millais painting The Ruling Passion. The Gould League, founded in Australia in 1909, was named after him. This organisation gave many Australians their first introduction to birds, along with more general environmental and ecological education. One of its major sponsors was the Royal Australasian Ornithologists' Union. In 1976 he was honoured on a postage stamp, bearing his portrait, issued by Australia Post. In 2009, a series of birds from his Birds of Australia, with paintings by H. C. Richter, were featured in another set of stamps. Topic. Family His son, Charles Gould, was notable as a geological surveyor. Topic bibliography Among the publications of John Gould are, Gould, John 1832-37. The Birds of Europe. London, published by the author, printed by Richard and John E. Taylor. OCLC 858091802 All editions. 5 vols. Drawn from Nature and on Stone by J. and E. Gould.
John Gould, a monograph of the Ramphastidae, or family of Tukans, 1833-35, one volume 34 plates, artists, J. Gould, E. Gould, E. Lear and G. Scharf, lithographers, E. Gould and E. Lear, John Gould, a synopsis of the birds of Australia, and the adjacent islands, 1837-38, one volume 73 plates, artist and lithographer, E. Gould John Gould, the birds of Australia, 1840-48, Vols. 600 plates, artists, J. Gould and E. Gould, lithographer, E. Gould John Gould, a monograph of the Odontophorinae, or Partridges of America, 1844-50, volume 32 plates, artists, J. Gould and H. C. Richter, lithographer, H. C. Richter John Gould, monograph of the Trachilidae, or family of hummingbirds, 1849-61-5, volume 25 parts, 360 plates, artists, J. Gould and and H. C. Richter, lithographer, H. C. Richter. Title pages for the volumes were issued last and are all dated 1861. John Gould, The Birds of Asia, 1850-83-7 vols. 530 plates, artists, J. Gould, H. C. Richter, W. Hart and J. Wolfe, lithographers, H. C. Richter and W. Hart, parts 33-55 completed after Gould's death by R. Bowdler Sharp, Volume 6, artist and lithographer, W. Hart John Gould, The Birds of Australia, Supplement 1851-69, 1 volume 81 plates, artists, J. Gould and H. C. Richter, lithographer, H. C. Richter John Gould, The Birds of of Great Britain, 1873. Five vols. 367 plates, artists, J. Gould, J. Wolfe, H. C. Richter and W. Hart, lithographers, H. C. Richter and W. Hart John Gould, the birds of New Guinea and the adjacent Papuan Islands, including many new species recently discovered in Australia, 1875-88. Five vols. 300 plates, parts 13 to 25 completed after Gold's death by R. Bowdler Sharp, artists, J. Gould and W. Hart, lithographer, W. Hart John Gould, a monograph of the Trachilidae, or family of hummingbirds supplement, completed after Gold's death by R. Bowdler Sharp, 1880-87. Five parts. 58 plates, artists, J. Gould and W. Hart, lithographer, W. Hart. Topic. Note John Gould also happened to live next to the famous Broad Street Pump during 1854. The pioneering epidemiologist John Snow mentions Gould and his assistant Prince in his famous publication, On the Mode of Communication of Cholera. Topic. See also All pages with titles containing Goldie for species named for Gould. All pages with titles containing Goldie for species named for Gould.